Mademoiselle, what a pleasure to see you. Detective, I... It is a rather late hour to be wandering the halls. Oh, yes. Of course. I do not feel myself, Detective. If that is the case, you should be resting. Allow me to help. No, no, that's quite all right. I will see to my duties and return to bed. Lizzie! Excuse me, Elizabeth. Lady Van Den Bosch has been waiting for some time now. Oh, yes. Sorry. Detective Poirot was just... I'll see to the detective. You just head on up. Off you go. Good night, detective. Bonne nuit, mademoiselle. I'm sorry about her, detective. As you can see, she is still not back to her usual bubbly self. This weekend seems to have taken quite a toll on her. She'll be right as rain in a couple of days. Now, what can I help you with? As if by magic you appeared when needed. I would like to speak with you and the remaining staff, if you could gather them in the staff pantry. At this hour, detective, is that really necessary? I shall be the one that determines what is and what is not necessary, and this is very much the former. As you wish, Detective. I'll see if Inge is finished preparing for breakfast. And Mademoiselle Rihanna? Yes, of course. I'll fetch her from the kitchen. Elizabeth may be some time with the lady of the house. Perhaps you'd like to start with us? Very well. I shall speak with Mademoiselle Elizabeth when her duties are complete. While I am gathering the staff, Mr. Beckers is in the library. If you wish to join him, I could bring you both a nightcap. I wish to keep a clear head, but there is something I wish to discuss with Monsieur Beckers. Monsieur Beckers, it is rather late. The other guests have already retired to their rooms. I didn't even see the time. It's easy to lose oneself in a library this impressive. That is something we can agree on, monsieur. I suppose I should be heading. A moment, monsieur. There are some matters that we must discuss. Oh, what is it, detective? I'm not sure what you mean. A proposal to make you somewhat of a star, a figurehead for the working man. What would you call that? There was certainly no talk of making me a star. That is not the type of man I am. She wanted to write a piece on my work with the Union. And I was happy to oblige. My speech? I'm not sure what speech. You may save your false ramblings for your next audience. I am aware you spoke with the Major yesterday. Whoever told you that has it wrong, Detective. Please, Monsieur. The truth. Okay, fine. Yes, the Major and I spoke, but it was not for long. I was trying to convince him to speak with Ernesto. It's time we brought the strikes to an end. 
And that was best approached by a shouting match? He wouldn't listen to a word I said. I spent so long preparing how I was going to convince him, but men like him are only swayed by one thing, money. It is said that money is the root of all evil, but it can also be a rather powerful bargaining chip. Well, he was bargaining with people's lives. If he had acted sooner, none of those men, my men, would have to die. A deal? It was an insult! And that is why you did not sign it? I didn't sign it because the workers deserve so much more. Not his pathetic attempts to get them back to work. Did you think there was a chance for a better deal to be made? I know there was. He's a pompous swine that cares for only himself and filling his pockets. Mademoiselle Conrad can be quite convincing, can she not? She has certainly taken several wealthy business partners by surprise with her knowledge and prowess. She knows how to use her womanly powers to get what she wants. But she did not surprise or use you? Me? Use me? Don't be ridiculous, detective. There were no games played at my expense. Perhaps some, but I'm not so easily manipulated or simple-minded. And I stand by that. It was an insult. A rather bold move to make such a decision on your own. <laughs> I may not be perfect, but I've done everything I can. Your efforts fell short in every respect. You claim to be the voice of the people, but you care about no one's voice or benefits but your own. It's not as easy as just signing a piece of paper, detective. It is a heavy weight to bear on one's shoulders. I consulted with others. You yourself spoke of Mademoiselle Conrad's cunning in business. And I told you, I was not one of her targets. Tell me then. What was it she reminded you of? The acclaimed man of the people you would be known as if you pushed the factory owners for more? It wasn't like that at all. From where I am standing, it was she that was manipulating the terms of the deal, and you in the process. You were merely her pawn. Okay, yes, I know. I shouldn't have listened to her. But what else could I do? Remain an unknown my whole life? I didn't mean for anyone to get hurt. It may not have been your intention, but we both know the result. You rolled the dice with those men's lives for fame, and you lost. What does that have to do with anything? I have often wondered about the competition siblings face in a large family. When you're young, it is the best feeling to know you have family that will stand by you without even being asked. It is not until everyone starts carving their own path that you realize you're walking your solo, and those that were beside you are now miles away. My older brothers were the athletes of the family. They both played soccer, and were the infatuation of every teenage girl. I'm sure you have seen the type. Oui, monsieur, but I can assure you that was not I. Then there was me, quiet, timid, a shadow of the Baker brothers. My voice and very presence was forgotten and ignored. Nothing I could say or do would ever reach the bar they had set. But I always knew I was destined for great things. Years passed and now that I no longer stood in the colossal ombre of my brothers, I could become my own man. When the position of union leader was posted, it was my chance to finally be heard. You hear politicians speak of the little or the common men? Well, that was me. And I knew what we wanted and what we needed. When I spoke, others listened. I held their gaze with a sense of pride. A sense that what I was doing was for the greater good. It was supposed to be my crowning achievement. 
lead the men to victory over the money-grabbing oppressors. But instead, all I did was lead them to their deaths. Monsieur, it was not at your hands that these men died. The blame cannot lie solely on your shoulders. Those responsible will be punished for their crimes. That you must trust. You can help me by telling the truth, and in the process, help yourselves. Sorry, Detective. It's a bit late in the night for riddles. It is no riddle, Monsieur. If I do not receive the truth, you shall all be charged as accessories to murder. Detective, I think maybe you have been locked in this house for too long. We have already... You have told me a version, and now I require honesty. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Mm. 
Monsieur Sterling, is there anything you would like to add to your story? I'm not sure what you think I have done, Detective. Let us not string out this charade any longer. From his associate? I've already told you, Detective. I don't know who it was. Do not worry yourself on such details now. I suppose they were lucky to have called when they did. Otherwise, they may not have gotten through at all, with the telephone lines being down as of yesterday. Aye, Detective. Lucky, I guess. Whiskey? You took a bottle of whiskey to the Major. You spoke with Monsieur Demir en route. Aye, of course. It was a bottle he picked up from his last visit to Scotland. Rather smoky number from the Highlands. He was saving it for a worthy occasion. Drowning his sorrows must have been fitting enough. Or was it the one from the West Coast? You'll have to excuse my memory, Detective. It's not what it used to be. Oh, you found it. Thank you, Detective. I've been looking everywhere for it. If I had lost a war medal, I would not stop until I found it. It's not what you think. I was... Exploiting a dead man's military achievements for your own personal gain? Nothing of the sort. He asked me to clean them up. I must have dropped it into my pocket when I was putting them back. An honest mistake. I wouldn't know. Probably. Your father was in the military for many years. That is what you told me. He was. And your family still keep his medals? They were sold. And why was that, monsieur? Is my family on trial now, detective? Only you, monsieur. And I repeat my question. Because we needed money. Voila. No. He keeps them safe with some of his old military documentation. Is that a typical job for the head butler? He trusts me to do a good job. I told him I used to clean my father's, so he asked me to do the same. And where does he keep these items? In the storage room. I know where everything is, so it's just easier if I fetch them for him as and when he needs them. It's certainly better than my last. You are paid a fitting wage for the work that is asked of you? I'm sure the lady of the house would not want me discussing it. But I... I should not complain. That is not the most convincing answer, monsieur. Between you and I, we all work very hard here. And it would be nice if we were rewarded for it. Please don't go anywhere. If I require more information, I shall call on you again. Mademoiselle, I shall keep my questions brief. I don't know what else I can tell you. You have been honest with me so far. All I request is that you continue to do so. Oui, Detective. It was frantic in the pantry. We were working hard to make sure everything was up to scratch. Go on. Then Liz burst in, asking for Maman Ray's help. Her help with what? I don't know. She took Liz to one side, and I was needed in the salon. We spoke just after that in the pantry. You did not question what she needed help with? I was too busy. I love Liz. But she sheds a tear at almost everything these days. 
Although, I have never seen her look so pale. Merci. I shall return if I have any further... Mademoiselle, I shall be as quick and precise with my questioning as possible. Okay. What do you need? Merci. He was a good man. Taken too early. Forgive me, mademoiselle, for not extending them earlier. But I was not aware of your relationship. He was my only brother. And he died doing what he believed was right. If I ever get my hands on who took him from me. You say the riots, but it was the strike he was part of. They started the riots, not the workers. By they, you are referring to the security forces. They were brought... Security, huh? They were brought in to make an example of them. It was all peaceful until they arrived. Why would they need to make an example? So that the workers would stop rallying. No one is going to go on strike if they think they'll get killed. The security you talk of were armed and ready. The workers were pigs to the slaughter. What chance did they have? Yes. This was before or after Archibald took him a bottle of whiskey. Before? You are sure? It may have been after. The whiskey is kept in the cellar with all the alcohol. It is. Then you must have noticed him going into the cellar and returning with a bottle through the pantry, no? Yes, I suppose I did. It must have been before then. What is there to say? Being locked away in the pantry, I don't see her for most of the day. That may be, but she came looking for your help before dinner was served, did she not? She wasn't feeling well, that's all. And she came to you? I told you, we are a family here. The girls come to Mama Reh if they have a problem, and I fix it. When I saw her earlier, I must admit she was not looking herself. Perhaps I should check on her. No! Just leave the poor girl. She'll be fine after another bowl of my homemade soup. She just needs her rest. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Things are beginning to become clearer. Things 
things are beginning to become clearer. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Another success. I never doubted myself. What a revelation! The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Magnifique. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction.
magnifique. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. What a revelation! Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together.
Mr. Stowling. Oh, Detective, I was just... Please, I eagerly await to hear what reason you give for being in the storage room at this hour. A butler's job is never... I am no fool, Monsieur. You have spun enough stories this weekend. Honestly, Detective, you don't trust anyone. And with good reason. I've been thinking about my time with the family. I often think on fond memories, but it does not take me to a storage room in the middle of the night. There are many memories held within these walls. I just wanted to see them again. I didn't realize the noise I was making. Obviously. Were you preoccupied looking for another of the Major's medals? Of course not. I already explained. No, Monsieur. You attempted to dupe me again into believing one of your stories. Please, Detective. I know you know how it ended up in my possession. I was just trying to get some extra money together to send home. I can't lose this job. If Lady Van Den Bosch found out... Theft of a medal would be the very least of your problems. Deceive? I'm sorry that I lied to you about the medal. Would you care to explain the fake telephone call? It was purely for my benefit, no? Why would I fake a telephone call? The same reason that Mademoiselle Rayana dressed in the Major's jacket in the snow. To allow not only the guests, but me, to believe the Major was still alive. I didn't kill him, Detective. I know, Monsieur. But I also know that you helped the one that did to cover their tracks. It wasn't like that. We were just trying to help. She had no part in it. You never let on. How long have you known it was her? Monsieur, I am Detective Hercule Poirot. I only show my hand when I deem it necessary. You will be taking her away then. She will stand trial for what she has done. But you don't know the full story. She is just a servant in this house. If she is arrested, that will be the end for her. If Mademoiselle was only protecting herself, as you both have claimed, she will surely be found innocent. The Major's military storage box. The one that stored his medals. Amongst other things, yes. And those other things are? I had to protect her. If you found it when searching the study, you would have carted her off then and there. Whatever it is you have hidden, it will not remain that way for much longer. I need a moment. Ah. Thank you. 
another success. I never doubted myself. Things are beginning to become clearer. Huh. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Another success. I never doubted myself. There is no use lying anymore. He always had his regiment lighter that he received in the war on his person. And yet, it was not his regiment emblem that was engraved on it. My father's. It must have fallen out of my pocket. You still have it, detective. Monsieur, you have stashed evidence, manipulated a crime scene, obscured my investigation, and yet it is a lighter that you worry about most. If it is my path to end up behind bars for what I have done, so be it. It is Elizabeth that you cannot allow to be locked up without the truth being told. I have heard how you fought for that young maid before. Florette, is it? I only ask that you do the same for Elizabeth.
Even the secret area that has been created here is not concealed enough to stop Detective Hercule Poirot. I couldn't just leave it at the scene for you to find. The Major was killed by his own knife. The knife that protected his life during the war would eventually be the one that ended it. It was in his holster when he attacked her. He had hold of her arm. What else was she meant to use to get him off of her? She didn't plan any of it, Detective. She was only defending herself. That is what Mademoiselle told you? She did, and I believe her. You think you knew the Major, but you had no idea. He was a monster and had more secrets than all of us combined. That may be true, but that does not excuse what she has done. Put yourself in her shoes for a minute. If a man like that had attacked me the way he did Lizzie, I would have done a lot worse to him. I need a moment. What a revelation! Things are beginning to become clearer. There is no use lying anymore. When you asked me yesterday about seeing someone out there, I thought the game was up. That does not explain what you were doing out there. When Lizzie took me to the study, the knife was still in the Major's chest, and I knew I had to get rid of it. I dropped it out of the window, knowing no one would be going outside. It was fine for the time being, but I couldn't risk it being found when the snow melted. So you collected it under the cover of darkness and stowed it away in here where you thought no one would find it. After your questioning in the pantry, I knew you were on to something, and I couldn't leave it here. And where did you plan on moving it to? Honestly, I don't know. There is no use lying Why what? Why I would risk everything to help Lizzie? Exactement. Because she is family. If you were in that position, you would do the same. I can assure you, monsieur, that I would... Then perhaps that says something about you, detective. I would do anything for her. For any of my staff. Even if it means crossing the boundaries of the law? Without question. Aye, Detective, but please, you have to help Lizzie. It was all an accident. She doesn't deserve to spend the rest of her days behind bars because of that man. If she is put behind bars, it is because that is what the courts have decided upon. Detective, you can't be so cruel. It is not cruelty, Monsieur. It is the law.
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Another success. I never doubted myself. Things are beginning to become clearer. What a revelation! Detective Poirot, I'm glad you're awake. Bonjour, mademoiselle. It has certainly not been a night of peaceful sleep. There is something that we must discuss. Please, detective. I'm not sure I can take any more surprises like last night. I'm afraid this may be the most upsetting of them all. You have found Felix's killer, haven't you? I have. And the guilty party will certainly come as a shock. Detective, please. It was Mademoiselle Elizabeth that was behind the Major's death. You must be mistaken. Elizabeth would not, could not do such a thing. I assure you I am not. It is something I spent much of last night deliberating. When you spoke of the telephone lines being out of order, it made me question the conversation I thought I had heard Monsieur Sterling make with the Major before connecting the call to him. But it hasn't been working all weekend. Exactement, mademoiselle. That is when I knew I had once again been lied to. She was meant to be resting in the staff quarters. She has not been well. I am afraid that was yet another lie, orchestrated to keep her from incriminating herself. Why would you think that, detective? I only managed a few words with her, 
before we were quite abruptly interrupted by Monsieur Starling. I must admit, he has a habit of speaking over the other staff. It was much more than merely disturbing our conversation. It was done with the intention to prevent Mademoiselle saying something that she should not. So, Elizabeth killed Felix, and then Archibald helped her cover it up? In its simplest form, oui. I have heard it directly from the horse's mouth. You have spoken with Elizabeth already? Did she admit to it? Not Elizabeth, but Monsieur Sterling. I wasn't. What were you doing in there, detective? It was Monsieur Sterling that I found in there. I was taken by some surprise to hear anyone awake at that hour. What on earth was he doing? He claimed he was merely reminiscing of his time with the family. You don't believe him. It did not take long for me to uncover the truth of why he was there, and the location of the Major's murder weapon. Hidden area? A room that held all of the Major's secrets. I had no idea. Did you discover the reason for his blackmail? I did. Were you aware he was dishonorably discharged from the army? Dishonorably? What does that mean? Yes, Gideon told me about the conversation you had. It is really quite upsetting. Zachariah was adamant of the Major's cruelty during the war, but the extent was not known until now. He killed a number of prisoners, men that were friends of Zachariah. Surely not. He would not do such a thing. They must have been trying to escape. I am afraid not. They were in fact unarmed. Oh, detective. It is the reason he was discharged, denied his military pension, and I believe the reason he fled England. He had been such an important part of my life for so long, but I feel like I hardly knew him. Innocence? You said it was she that killed him. It was her hand that held the knife, but he was quite insistent it happened in self-defense. In all of the years I have known her, she has barely even raised her voice. I cannot believe she would do something like that out of malice. The whole truth cannot be known until Mademoiselle Elizabeth has told her story. Will you allow me to be present? I think that is an excellent idea. I hope your presence will calm her and will perhaps allow her to speak more freely. Please, detective. I know she has done a terrible thing, but I beg of you to give her the time to explain herself. I will offer Mademoiselle Elizabeth the fair trial that she deserves, as I would with any suspect. Thank you, Detective Poirot. Would you bring Mademoiselle Elizabeth to the study, where we will not be disturbed? Of course. I'll find her immediately. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, merci for joining us. Miss Angeline said you requested to see me urgently. We have some serious matters to discuss, and I would like to waste no further time. Oh, yes, Detective. Still not quite myself. I was surprised when Monsieur Sterling hurried you to assist Madame Vandenbosch last night. I should not have avoided my duties for so long. The house does not stop because I'm feeling a little under the weather. That is true. But you cannot be expected to complete all your tasks if you are not in the right frame of mind. Honestly, Detective, it was best for me to not sit and wallow anymore. Have you been able to uncover who the blackmailer is? The blackmailer's identity has been established, and they will pay the price for their crimes. Wonderful news, Detective. You can put it all behind you now. You must be thrilled. I would not say thrilled, knowing that such a close friend has betrayed us. Mademoiselle is correct. 
What I have learned over this weekend is that people are not always as they appear. While they may give an impression of being a friend or ally, they can in fact be something completely different. And, um, what of the Mage's Killer? Well, Mademoiselle, that is why I have asked you here now. I'm not quite sure what you want me to say, Detective. Your honest opinion is all I ask, and, s'il te plaît, do not hold back. No one else felt it necessary. We only spoke when there was something in the house to be done. We did not speak of interests or pastimes. You knew of his work with Monsieur de Silva? I only know what is required of me to know, and that is very little. But you were aware of his work as security at Monsieur de Silva's factory. I was. The factory your beloved Luke worked at before he was cruelly taken from this world. Yes, Detective. Yes, that is where he spent his last moments. Standing shoulder to shoulder with his fellow workers. The resulting riots were a terrible tragedy. One that I hope we will not have to see or experience again. Something that could have been avoided had the Major and his team done what was required of them. Nobody deserved to die that day. Not my Luke. Detective, what kind of question is that? It is a straightforward one. I... he... Mademoiselle, if there is something you wish to tell me, now is that time. I'm sorry, Detective, I just don't know how to answer it. Let us consider what we know of the Major. He fronted the militia that attacked the workers at the strike. You were aware... I... You finally had someone to blame for Luke's death. Someone conveniently located in the same house, alone in his study. No, Detective. It wasn't like that. Tell me what happened with the Major on the evening of his death. I was only in here trying to prove what I heard Mr. Becker say. I was going to report him, I swear. Miss Angeline, you believe me, don't you? I want to. I am still trying to understand it all myself. Why don't you start from the beginning? I was delivering Miss Angeline's dress to her room when I heard Mr. Becker's arguing with the Major in his study. They were ever so loud. I thought the whole house would have been listening to what they were saying. Mr. Becker's was talking about the factory strikes and how it was the Major's fault. He told him that if he didn't own up to his crimes, he would go to the newspapers. I cannot imagine the Major would have taken kindly to Monsieur Becker's threat. He didn't. He called him some rather uncouth names before Mr. Becker's left and went downstairs. I made sure to keep out of sight. After the altercation between the Major and Master Gideon, you went to speak with him outside, and I thought I could look around his study without anyone knowing. I had to know for sure. If it was true, he deserved to be held accountable. And did you find the proof you are looking for? I found a payment from Mr. De Silva, but there was nothing incriminating about that. I was so nervous. I felt like my heart was beating out of my chest. And then you saw the blackmail knot. I recognised the writing on the envelope. I couldn't believe it. How could he do such a thing to Angeline? To the family that had taken him in? Common sense would determine the Major was another victim of the blackmailer. If I'd have used common sense, I wouldn't have been snooping around alone in his study in the first place. I heard the footsteps in the hall and before I could move, the Major was standing in front of me demanding to know why I was going through his belongings without permission. I tried to come up with an excuse, but nothing came out, and when he saw the letter in my hand, it was like Dr. Jekyll turning into Mr. Hyde. I tried to move around him towards the door, but he hurled something towards me and it crashed against the wall. That would explain the damage to the wall. I froze. I have never been so scared in all my life. I thought he was going to kill me there and then. And you thought you would beat him to it? Oh, Detective, you make it sound as though I had it all planned. He lunged forward and grabbed me by the arm. I tried to push him away, but he was too strong. His grip just got tighter and tighter. If only you had seen the look in his eyes, I dared not even scream. I saw the sheath on his belt. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want to hurt him, but he wouldn't let go of me. So you took your opportunity to put an end to it all. I just wanted to get him off me. I didn't want to hurt him. I reached for it and I jabbed it at him. His grip instantly loosened and I ran straight out the door and didn't look back. 
You did not even look to see what state you had left him in? She had just been a typed detective. Oui, please. Continue. I ran down to the pantry looking for Rahana. She took one look at me and knew something was wrong. I explained to her what had happened and she went to find Archie. She said he would know what to do. We went back to the study and he was still lying there, motionless. Archie said that no one would believe me. That if someone like me killed someone like him, I would be sent straight to the gallows. He left the letter so you would find it. He said that if people knew what the Major was really like, then they wouldn't care what happened to him. So I am to believe that it was Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana that cleaned the scene and orchestrated a plan that included a fake telephone call and dressing as the Major so that he may be seen. You had nothing to do with that. I swear I had no idea that is what they had done. Archie just told me to stay out of sight. I am no master criminal. Then Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana will be charged for obstruction of justice and impeding my investigation. Please, Detective! They were only trying to help me! If they wished to help you, they should have brought all of this to my attention immediately instead of committing more illegal acts. Surely you haven't forgotten what happened with Florette. She was only accused of stealing a bracelet. I killed a man. It is a day I have not forgotten, Mademoiselle. Even for a moment. Without your help, I don't stand a chance. Please, Detective Poirot, you are the only one that can help me. Oh, Elizabeth, why didn't you come to me? I didn't think you would believe me. I felt so guilty. And when it was announced yesterday that he was a victim of the blackmailer, I wanted to tell you everything. I came to find you last night, Detective, but Archie stopped me. I'm sorry. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Oh, yes, Detective. I don't know where it is. If you have been honest with me until now, I ask that you continue. I'm sorry, I really don't know. Archie dropped it out of the study window and he said he would deal with it. I couldn't bear to touch the thing. Please! I was only protecting myself. I didn't want to hurt him. He just wouldn't let me go! Oui, mademoiselle. I know. Mademoiselle tells quite the harrowing story. I cannot imagine the Major acting in such a way. But Elizabeth could not make up such a story. After learning what I have about the Major's character this weekend, I would not question the lengths he would go to in order to keep his secret hidden. I know that you share a close bond with Mademoiselle Elizabeth. 
But you cannot allow your personal feelings to taint your belief of what took place. She has committed a terrible crime, but she will live with that for the rest of her life. She is not a cold-blooded killer. If what she says of the Major's attack is true, she acted in self-defense. And in the law's eyes, a crime has not been committed. I will do everything I can to make sure her story is heard and a fair trial is conducted. Mademoiselle, it is time I addressed the house. Are you sure? What will you say? What if they do not listen? I can assure you, they will. Elizabeth was right, though. She's just a servant. What if they... Mademoiselle, when Detective Poirot speaks, they will listen. Would you ask the guests to convene in the library? Of course. And what of the staff? I have told Monsieur Sterling to remain in the staff quarters with the others. When the authorities arrive, they shall be dealt with. You have been of great help to me throughout my investigation. And now that it is over, I have one final request. You only need to ask. While I am speaking with the guests in the library, would you watch over Mademoiselle Elizabeth in my room? You don't think she will try and escape, do you? In her position, I do not know what she might try. But I trust with you there, any potential ideas of such a thing will be squashed. <laughs> <laughs>